Okay, let's figure out how many total outfits we can make given we have three types of pants. Those would be jeans, slacks, and dress pants. And then we have two types of shirts, which let's say we have a long sleeve shirt and a short sleeve shirt. And we have two different types of shoes, uh, dress and sneakers. So I know most of you uh, out there in your closet, you have much more than this. But uh, let's say someone who was just a really simplistic, minimalistic in their lifestyle, maybe this is all they have. They're like, boy, I only have three types of pants, two shirts and two shoes. Woe is me because, you know, I don't, you know, I can't make that many outfits. But how many outfits can you make given this kind of situation? So the topic of this video is about counting. Okay. So now, some of you probably right now are like, oh, yeah, you can have, uh, this is how many outfits you can make. Now, again, you may or may not be correct with the number that you're uh, stating. Uh, I want you to be certain. How can you really know for certain that the number of outfits that you just said, or maybe you're guessing, is correct? Okay, how can you verify that? So, we're going to be talking about um, counting and I'm going to be talking about something called counting trees and something called the fundamental principle of counting. So yes, counting goes more, uh, it's more than just saying, hey, well, that's one, two, three, four, et cetera, counting. Hey, there's one car, two cars, three cars, four cars. Of course, that's counting, but with a little bit more sophisticated type of problems, then we need to kind of get into more, uh, you know, sophisticated ways of counting. All right, this is very, very important. In mathematics and I think you'll find it uh, fairly interesting so we're gonna get to this in just one second but first let me quickly introduce myself my name is John I'm the founder of Taba class math I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over many years I've constructed what I'd like to believe is one of the best online video based math programs there is of course I'll let you be the judge of that if you're interested you can find the link to uh, my math help program in the description of this video but um, I have uh, many, many full online uh, math courses. So if you got to take a full online math course, let's say college algebra, algebra two, geometry, whatever, I can help you. Okay. Of course, I have a lot of other specialty courses um, in my math help program. But uh, if you're taking a course right now, but you need assistance, um, you know, let's say you're trying to find a tutor or you're struggling, then my math program can really, really help you out. So I have full lessons and I teach you how to solve the most common type of problems you're going to encounter in middle and high school math. I literally solve thousands of problems, all video based. Um, again, if you're interested, you can follow the link in the description of this video. Now, if you are a math student, I must stress to you the importance of note taking. This is the number one thing that you need to be focused on. Um, outside of uh, the obvious other things, okay? But if you want to really have a good indication of how well you're going to do in math, take a, look at your, take a look at your notes. Over decades of teaching math, one thing is apparent to me, those students with the best math notes almost always have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who have no math notes, sloppy math notes, disorganized math notes, um, and of course, I always like to say, Oh, uh, my dog ate my homework and my math notes. I don't have my math notes. I lost my math notes. I gave them to my best friend. Whatever the case is, if you want to do well in math, you got to strive in taking the best possible notes you can. Okay, so take a look at your notes, reflect on that, and uh, there's always room for improvement. Now, in the meantime, you need something to study from, so I actually offer detailed, comprehensive math notes. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find a link to uh, those in the description of this video. Okay, now let's get into uh, this problem. We're talking about counting, okay? So let's say I have uh, um, some homes here, my little houses. So again, uh, this is pretty simple, right? If I wanted to say, how many homes do I have? Now, everyone could see that we have four homes, but we're counting, right? This principle, one, and now here I have two homes, and here I have three homes, and all together here I have four homes. So counting is just kind of this natural kind of thing that we learn to do, right? When we're, you know, uh, just born, we're kind of like, you know, just start immediately, start identifying there's one person, two person. This is the most natural basic parts of, um, you know, number sense, okay? It's just counting, but counting could be much more uh, complicated especially in when we're trying to figure out, you know, a problem like that we're going, we're going to be doing here in a second, right? When there's multiple things going on, 
then it becomes much more interesting. So counting, I think sometimes students, they'll say, oh, yeah, we're going to learn about counting. I already know how to count. One, two, three, four. No, that's 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 basic counting. Counting is much more sophisticated, and we need to know how to count. Um, it becomes really, really important and more advanced mathematics. So that as, as you progress in your mathematics uh, adventures, you're going to be studying things like probability and statistics and other type of math, and you get to know, you need to know how to count, all right? And this gets into things like permutations, combinations, all kinds of crazy stuff. So, but in the meantime, what I'm going to be getting into is uh, uh, two fundamental things that you need to be very aware of, okay? Now, one is going to be called a counting tree, and the next thing that we're going to be talking about is a fundamental principle of uh, counting, okay? So, or the fundamental counting principle. So we'll we'll take a look at both of these, and be this will be a nice introduction to some counting uh, concepts. All right, so let's get into the problem. So we got some pants, shirts, and shoes. Of course, this person really needs to upgrade their life uh, because really, you know, they don't really have too much in their closet. Of course, I'm being a little bit funny about this. You can do a lot with, uh, you know, this wardrobe. So let's take a look and figure out using a counting tree exactly how many outfits this person can uh, put together. So we got pants, shirts, and shoes, right? So let's figure this out, okay? Remember... We had three types of pants. You can see the answer here is going to be 12. So if you said 12 total outfits, you're right, but let's verify that. Okay, let's just make sure. So we have jeans, slacks, and then we had dress pants, right? So let's just say, okay, um, how many outfits can I make with my jeans? Well, if I have my jeans, um, I have the option of a long sleeve shirt or a short sleeve shirt. So right here, this is what we are doing. These, little, these are little branches. This is called a tree, okay, a counting tree, because I can visually see my options. So I start with my jeans. I'm like, oh, I can go to a, a long sleeve or a short sleeve. So let's say I went with my long sleeve. I got my jeans. I went, my, I went my, with my long sleeve. What about my shoes? Well, I got my choice of dress, shoes, or sneakers. So I can I could have this combination, my jeans. I could have my jeans, my long sleeve shirt, and my dress shoes. So that's one outfit right there. That's one unique outfit, okay? Or I could have my jeans, my long sleeve shirt, okay, and my sneakers. That's another outfit, okay? So these are kind of like my final outfits that I can put together. So you can start seeing that, oh, all right, I can kind of count every possible kind of combination I can do here. So... Uh, let's do the same thing with my short sleeve sh uh, shirt. So I got jeans, short sleeve, dress. So boom, that's another one. And this is another outfit that I can do. I can have jeans, short sleeve shirt, and my sneakers. So we're detecting a pattern, okay? So now we're like, okay, I have one, two, three, four different outfits I can uh, create with my jeans. And then obviously if I take a look at my slacks and I do the same thing, and uh, my dress pants, I do the same thing. I have four here, okay, four here, and four there, and you are correct in your basic counting, four plus four plus four is 12. Okay, so we have 12 total outfits that we can put together, and again, we verify this or use what we call a counting tree. So counting trees are very useful, and you're going to see them um, in your mathematics journey, okay? When you're studying counting, probability, uh, these type of problems, this is a pretty, a pretty common um, principle that, you know, uh, that shows up on tests, and standardized tests and things like that. So this is a counting tree, and it's a very good technique. However, what's the matter with the counting tree, all right? Well, here I have three pants, I have two shirts and two shoes, what happens if I had, let's say, seven pants, and I had 10 shirts, and I have, let's say, uh, nine pair of shoes, okay? What happens? Well, this becomes very, <laughs> like, our tree gets, like, crazy, right? We're going to be many, many branches. So the thing about it is county trees are great with more basic um, principles to kind of get the concepts down and verify things, but... We really, you know, it's it's not like a practical way to, uh, um, you know, a method. It's not a practical method 
to count large number of items because we're going to run out of room on our paper, right? We're just going to be all over the place. But it's important to see um, how the how counting works by using a counting tree. But we need another approach. And luckily for us, we do have another approach. And that is to learn something called the fundamental counting principle. Okay? The fundamental counting principle. So I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. And then we're going to do this same problem using the fundamental counting principle. All right, so here's what it is. It says, if one event can occur in M ways, so if one thing can occur in one way, in, in M ways, and another event can occur in N ways, then the number of ways that both events okay, can occur is uh, equal to M times N. Okay, now of course, when you read a kind of formal definition like this in mathematics, it's kind of dry and it doesn't really have a lot of meaning until we actually see the application of it. But let's just quickly go through it again. So if one event can occur in M different ways and another one can occur in N ways, then both of them can occur in M times N ways. So here we're talking about two events, all right? But this can happen, or this principle extends to more than just two events. It can, it can go on for a uh, hundred events or a thousand events. So this principle works when there are more than two events. So let's say, for example, we have three events, okay? So if three events can occur in M ways, M, N, and K ways, then all then the number of ways all three, then the number of ways all three events can occur is M times N times K, okay? All right, so this is really important, and this is the fundamental counting principle, and this is going to kind of replace our counting tree, uh, and you're going to see how in just one second. So let's take a look at the same problem. So how many outfits can you make given? All right, it's the same problem, just kind of formatting it in a different way. So given, here's my pants, I got jeans, slacks, dress, and my shirts, I have my long and short sleeve, and my shoes, I have dress and sneakers. So how many event, um, how many ways, okay, um, how many outfits can you make given uh, the following, right? And the following really is three pants, okay? I have three pants, two shirts, and two shoes. So now when I'm constructing an outfit, okay, these events, okay, when my outfits that I'm, my here's my little outfit like right here, all right? So let's take my pants, for example. So how many different ways can my pants be, uh, you know, um, constructed, all right, or, or selected? Well, there are three ways that can happen, okay? So this event, or this is like my M this is like my N, and this is like my K, all right? So there's three ways I can select my pants, all right? So there's three ways that can happen. All right, how about my shirts, okay? Well, there are two ways this event can happen. Let's see if I can use another color, all right? So there are two ways my shirts can be selected. And how about my uh, shoes? Okay, down here, there are two ways I can select shoes. Okay, so in total, all right, this is the fundamental counting principle, the total number of outfits that I can um, create is going to be these events being multiplied by one another. So this would be like my M times my N times my K, or three times two times two, which is, of course, six times two or 12. So 12 total outfits. And of course, we verified that, um, or we were able to see this visually uh, with the counting tree. Okay, so counting trees are excellent, but again, you know, uh, those are for like, you know, nice when you have smaller numbers and you're not counting too much. But when it starts to get, starts to really, you know, um, get more complicated or the values go up in terms of what you're counting, then we need things like the um, fundamental counting principle, right? And this is extremely important, okay? So again, remember, counting, um, you know, obviously we all know how to count at this point, you know, being uh, alive, one, two, three, four, all that kind of good stuff. But remember, counting becomes much more sophisticated and it goes way more sophisticated than what we're even uh, 
um, talking about right now. But this is a good start, and hopefully this is, you know, kind of like excited you to be like, wow, I want to learn more about accounting. And you should, and you will, as you continue to pursue your mathematics adventures, okay? So accounting is awesome. So if this, uh, you know, video was uh, helpful, entertaining, educational, in some ways, if you liked it, please consider smashing that like button. I would much appreciate that. And uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time, 10 plus years. Uh, I love the platform. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel already. Basic to advanced math, organized in various playlists. Obviously, I love teaching math and I'm posting new stuff all the time. So um, again, you know, uh, please take advantage of those videos are there for you. But if you want my best, uh, math, uh, help and resources, just follow those links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.